Hey there creepy collectors, how's it going? I'm your host Douglas here at Drown Boy Productions and today I'm going to be giving you all a very long, very overdue tour of my ghost face shrine. Now if this is the first video that you're watching here on the channel, I'm going to go ahead and let you all know, I do have a pretty large collection of stuff outside of Screaming Ghost Face, but a majority of that stuff is currently packed away in boxes over here because I'm currently in the middle of trying to move, but we do have some stuff that will be not Screaming Ghost Face related still in the shrine room. I'm currently in the process of trying to relocate all this stuff somewhere public where it can act as a museum for many other fans and collectors and people like you watching who want to come see stuff like this in person can. Whether it be screaming ghost face stuff like the items you guys are about to see, including some very cool screen use pieces, or stuff from other franchises like this Killer Clowns from Outer Space screen use Cotton Candy Cocoon. And in the time that we've been doing this, I truly do believe that I have amassed what is the largest collection of screaming ghost face memorabilia in the world. I'm not saying it's necessarily the best. I know some collectors out there with absolutely insane collections of screen use stuff, but as far as a complete history of the masks, merchandise, and just different stuff like that, this one I think definitely takes the cake, and I'm really appreciative of all you out there who have helped me accomplish this. Whether it be by selling me something, trading me something, gifting me something, or hell, even just sending me a link to something that I'm looking for, that really does mean a lot. And because of that, it is really important to me to be able to share this with the rest of you. And being able to do that through a camera is already pretty awesome. I really appreciate it. It seems that you guys really love it as well. But to be able to have fans come up and see some of these costumes and pieces in person would be so much cooler. And at this point, it looks like I have found a place for the museum, and it looks like I'll be moving in in a few months. While everything is not 100% set in stone, it seems like it's going to work out, and I think it's going to work out for the best. So at this point, I'm just waiting to get things finalized, and actually my phone's ringing right now. I, that might actually be them. Let me see. Hello? Hello, Douglas. I heard you have one of the biggest collections of my memorabilia. I might need to stop by to collect some. Don't bother locking your doors. I'll find a way in. Well, I'm definitely moving after that. I was already pretty sure that this was going to be the last collection walkthrough video at this location, but now that definitely seems to be the case. Anyways, I just wanted to shoot this quick intro as a thank you to all of you who have supported me throughout the years. I really appreciate it, and I'm really a little bit nervous about this next step forward, but I think that if this all works out, this is going to be a really amazing thing for a lot of horror fans out there. And it seems that we've got some other pretty cool people that are interested in backing this project as far as lending out some cool props and costumes and stuff like that. So if all this stuff works out, guys... This is going to be truly amazing, and I really, really hope it does. I love you all. Thank you for watching. Let's go ahead and take a dive into the Ghost Face Shrine.
right, everyone, welcome to the Ghost Face Shrine. I'm actually going to go through and go in depth with everything, or at least tell you guys what pretty much everything is. I really don't know where to start. There's a absolute mass of stuff here, as you can see. Should we start somewhere more interesting or start at the beginning of the door? I think maybe start in this corner and work our way back. So we'll begin with one of the coolest things in the room. Here we have a screen used hero robe from Scream 2. This happens to be the one from the opening scene in the theater that killed Jada Pinkett Smith, as well as used in some other scenes. Down here we have various stab related pieces, the Scream 2 theatrical light box insert, VHS, DVD copies. And then we come over here and we have probably my favorite piece in the entire collection. We're just going to go ahead and talk about this first. You guys have probably already seen this video, but if you have not, go check out my video where I take this very costume to Jamie Kennedy in person. But this is the screen used Randy death scene costume from Scream 2. The mask accompanying it is just a costume mask, nothing special, but I hope to have that signed. I felt like it would just add to the display, so I put it on there. Here we have an original run chrome ghost face knife. Still tagged. Replica Father Death and Stab costumes behind the screen used robe. And then up here we have an official Stab poster. So this is a very high quality official Scream 2 promotional piece. As you can see, coming soon in Scream 2. Another Stab related piece is Robbie Mercer's Scream U Stab shirt from Scream 4. The Faux Randy. And speaking of stabbing, here we have Eric's personal hero sharp Scream Resurrection. That's right, season three of the TV series. This is the original one and only hero metal sharp knife. This is also the knife that was molded to make the stunt knives that were used in the TV series. I think I forgot to mention that in my initial video unboxing this, but very cool. Down here, we do have a cast and crew piece that has unfortunately fallen down. It kind of did that when I got it. I tried to reattach it and it's still fallen. So it's kind of a tight squeeze to get down here. But this is an original Scream Stalker insert that was actually used in a Horror Hound magazine as well as in Still Screaming, the documentary, when Wes Craven is talking about the history of the costume, you can see this very insert. And just to fill up the rest of the frame, I have some very rare miniature posters from Scream 1, 2, and 3 that also came from Nate. Then we have Randy's death shoes that accompany the costume, of course. And down here we have some masks that are locked away for containment reasons. This is a first run collector's edition mask, ultra white mold that has the blue spots. So it's in a plastic case. This one is a zombie that is partially fallen over, I guess. This is a first run as well. So it also has the blue dot issue. So it's locked away. Then over here, we have a Scream Resurrection and Scream 5 mask that also has the blue dot issue, so it is also locked away. And there's one of the flyers from the Mr. Fade production. If any of you have seen the TV series, surely you know about that. I think I forgot to cover this one, but this is a Poly Shroud Screaming wall and door plaque and a much, much larger version. Here we have the door decor still tagged but unfortunately it got a little bit damaged we'll move this way i suppose because i believe i forgot to talk about these this giant foam scream mask is actually a bootleg piece but because it looks so cool and because the size of it i felt like it framed very well on top of this display as for the fake marquee piece this was done by the one and only biz custom for this display thank you yet again biz Next, I want to talk about the Scream 2 replica life-size stab lobby animatronic. This was built by my father and I with the files being supplied by Ryan Hills. This was made from 100% original files from the movie. So this is pretty much as close as it's ever going to get to having the real one. And uh, the originals never surfaced all these years later. So I don't know if it's still around or not. I would love to see it surface, but... This one is pretty badass. If you have not seen our full video on this, I strongly suggest you go check it out. It's still one of my favorite pieces. 
Behind this piece, we have several of the Ghostface hanging decorations. I don't think any of these guys are tagged. Maybe one or two are. And then we have another wall and door plaque, but these are not the electronic versions, of course. These are just the thin plastic vacuform versions. And I am missing the glow-in-the-dark version that looks like the Gen 2 mask, like this version before your eyes. So I still need one more to complete the set, but still happy to have both of these in pretty darn nice condition. Stepping away from Ghostface for a moment, we have to address the Lakewood Slasher. This is absolutely one of my best scores of all time, one of the luckiest too, because this costume was going to be thrown away whenever I contacted the props department that had it. They uh, basically told me, perfect timing, we were actually clearing everything out and we were getting ready to throw this thing away. And I got it, plus a ton of cast and crew stuff for an absolute steal. And the mask was a separate purchase, but this is still gotta be one of the coolest pieces in the collection. You can even see he does have the proper gloves and everything. So another one of the most complete costumes here in the collection. I know most of you probably aren't fans of the series, but I watched this show since it came out. I watched every episode as it premiered. I was a huge fan, so to have something like this is absolutely tremendous to me. And if you follow him down here, you can see we have this mask, this mask, which we actually haven't covered here on the channel yet, and of course, in a Vans box, just a spare classic Brandon James mask, just like the one Gustavo has. Following this up, we have a Scream used Scream 4 Ghostface costume. Now this technically is a costume and mask, the bobblehead costume, but these were used as set decoration at the Stabathon and in downtown's Woodsboro. So it's technically a costume, but kind of a prop. Either way, it's still really, really cool. Then, starting here with the accurate boots, we follow it up to a very strange looking robe. This, while not screen used, is a Scream 4 production robe. The prototype robe in particular. Yet again, if you guys have not seen the standalone video on this, I strongly recommend you do, but basically, it had been over a decade since they had made a Scream movie. They didn't have a template for a robe, so they reached out to Nate Reagan. Nate sent them his Scream 3 robe. They made a template directly off the Scream 3 robe. Then they made a prototype costume, and this is that very prototype costume. It's made out of an entirely different material, and it was noted by production. Whenever it was sold by Premier Props after the fact, it was noted as having disco material. It's a very strange material indeed, but... Overall, this is still a production Scream 4 robe. It is a prototype piece, which is still really cool. It is a one-of-a-kind piece, which is even cooler. And yeah, absolutely love it. The mask has nothing to do with production. It's just a standard glow-in-the-dark reshoot mask, but still very, very cool. Then if we follow the robe down here, we have another animatronic. This is a Scream 4 era animatronic that can stand or be hung on the wall. I believe these were produced by Jimmy. I could be wrong on that, but I think they were Jimmy products. And still very, very cool. Then we have another screen used robe. This one being a Scream 2 robe, but of course not a hero robe. This is one of the theater attendees from the Stab Theater. So one of the Stab promotional robes, if you will, with an original mask. Now, many of you may notice that this mask is not a Gen 2 mask, and it is not. This is an EUHN mask. However, it was sold with the robe and it was said to be a screen used mask. It does have some discoloration on the inside of the shroud that is tucked into the robe here, but if you wanna see that in my video, go check that out. And of course, it's extremely yellowed. Now, I'm not 100% certain that this is a screen used mask, but the story that was told to me is that it was screen used, and something else that could help back it up is Ghostface actor and stuntman Lee Waddell claims to have an EUHN mask that was directly from the set of Scream 2. So if that is the case, I guess there is a chance that these were on the set for Scream 2, but personally, I was never able to screen match any EUHN masks on screen in any part of the movie. Now, you may have noticed behind this Ghostface shrine here, there is a giant standee. This is the standee for Scream 5. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, and I have not one of these, but two of these currently. I'm really, really, really hoping that I do get the one for Scream 6, but at this point I have not been called to come pick it up. And uh, definitely with the museum, like in here I would have nowhere to put it. There's no space for it, absolutely none. But with the museum opening, I think having the Scream 6 one next to this one would be awesome. 
Lining the wall up here, we have quite a few tag ghost face masks, and we have some very, very cool rarities. I guess let's just start at this end. This is a non-glow, red and black ghost face tagged, TD stamp reshoot mask. Technically, it's not the reshoot because it's not a glow-in-the-dark version. I would like to point that out to you all. However, it is a TD stamp mask. I know that most people just call this the reshoot mold as it's, I guess, the most common way that this thing's been, you know, identified over the years, but it is technically a TD stamp mask. Then if we come over here, we have one of the coolest rarities in all of the collecting world, the cryptic gauze mask. Now this mask is actually making a return this year, but not in exactly the same way. This is one of the coolest, rarest limited masks out there and just one of my favorite variants. I just love it so much. Then we have an original run burlap scarecrow ghost face mask. This is the same style basically as that Wes Craven scarecrow mask, but this is the ones that actually hit store shelves. As you can see, they are a little bit different. You'll see that other mask again later, but I'm sure some of you have already seen that mask in the video where I unbox this costume. If you haven't, seriously go check it out. It's one of the coolest unboxings on the channel, in my opinion. Next to the Scarecrow, we have a rare tagged foam ghost face mask. They did make these ghost face masks out of a very soft foam for a very short time period. And uh, they're cool looking, but they're not very high quality. I'm not really sure why they did this, unless there were kids with like vinyl allergies. But I don't know, maybe they were cheaper to produce or something, but they are really, really cool. They're just not very durable they get damaged very easily so not many of them have survived the test of time especially in great condition next up we have a set of vintage scary movie masks all these have different tags but they're all great condition masks this one in particular was featured in a horror hound magazine as well so i guess it's kind of semi-famous and it came directly from nate reagan very very cool piece and hidden off in the corner here we have one of the coolest and rarest pieces to find tagged an original glow-in-the-dark ASIS era mask and cape. And I guess it is important to distinguish that this is an EU mask version because they did have these with TD stamps and I think I've even seen a T stamp one pop up. And to finish up this corner, we have another tagged non-glow TD stamp mask. This one, just like the last one, is made out of the ultra white vinyl material. I don't know if I mentioned that with the last one, but as you can see, it is a pretty stark white so definitely not a glow-in-the-dark mask. We also do have two more scary movie masks. However, this one is a much later tag variation and a much later production run mask. And this one is actually a tea stamp version of the What's Up mask. Following those down, we have a glow-in-the-dark tagged horror knife, kind of just hiding back there. And then another very rare mask and robe child size costume. With one of the coolest tags in my opinion, Unfortunately, not the best condition, but still very, very cool. Over here, another rarity, the color changing ghost face mask. Check that out. One of the original dirty, dingy, aged ghost face masks, I guess. But it just gives it a bit more definition whenever it lights up. Pretty darn cool. Then we have the ghost face knife that has the bleeding mask image printed on it. Not, not much to say about that. Moving right along, we have an original tagged Brandon James mask. Still in pretty immaculate condition. Since these were used in the TV show, plus it is a, I guess at this point, kind of a rarer fun world mask, absolutely had to have one here for the collection. And even though it's hiding in the corner here, this is an original glowing gravestone. Still sealed, kind of, sort of. The plastic is a bit beat up and you know, the stakes have ripped through the bottom, but it's still in its original packaging and has the header tag hanging on back there. And now the one you guys are going to hate to see. This is what I've been dancing around this entire time that I've been making this video in this corner. Here we have one of the original 1 of 1600 Wes Craven signed Scream 3 posters. Now, this is technically a Scream 3 poster, even though it's for Scream 1, 2, and 3. This was a Scream 3 promotional piece. Very, very cool piece. Obviously, if you're a Scream fan, this is one of the best Wes Craven signed pieces you could get a hold of because there's tons of space to add signatures to it, especially with the convention market being the way it is these days. And I do hope to have this one filled up with signatures, which is one reason I haven't framed it yet, as well as the fact that I do have to have a custom frame made for it. But check that out, number 128 out of 1600. It was a little bit beat whenever it came to me, but I'm just really happy to have one of these, to be honest. 
Moving over here, we have a nice kind of like store rack display of many different fun world pieces. We've got a sealed window winker. We've got the safety light, the invisible ghoul mask back there, the scream pin on. This set of candles, which actually happens to also be featured in the Horror Hound magazine, the ghost face safety light. Now there's a difference here. This is the ghost face branded one, whereas this is the earlier just scream branded one. Then over there, we have the ghost face carving kit with the goop scoop. Can't forget the goop scoop. Up there, we've got a couple sets of the glow in the dark ghost face candles. Then we have the costume gloves. These are kind of rare to come across, but a small batch of them did pop up not too long ago. Behind that, we have the more modern uh, ghost face deluxe gloves, the kind of like faux leather ones. Then we have the candle holders. Of course, all this stuff still all originally sealed. It's been uh, pretty hard to come across all this stuff sealed, but still pretty proud of it. The eight invitations for the party and the ghost face and scary movie scream balloons. Now these were also used in scream four and the stabathon scene, but this is a sealed package of them. Pretty darn cool. I think up there we've got like a couple of other little fun world costumes. There's like some spider webs hiding out back there. I don't know how well you guys can see that and some other just random old vintage Halloween stuff. So kind of just supposed to look like a store rack. Hopefully whenever I expand, I can get something that looks a little bit less congested, but this kind of does look like just a whole bunch of random Halloween stuff shoved on the shelves. Then over here, we have a Scream Stalker Gen 2 mask that was gifted to me from Alex Wood. This one's actually signed on the inside. You can kind of see the signature through the forehead. But then moving down here to some other masks, we have the metallics. I absolutely love all the colors that the metallics bring to the table. So many cool, beautiful masks. And it's really awesome to see how the different colors change throughout the years and from mask mold to mold, just the different shades and hues of different colors that they used and how metallic they look versus just glossy. Pretty interesting. Up here, we have a full set of the TD stamped metallic masks, also known as the metallic reshoots, but it's the TD stamp. Then we have the MK Squinty masks. Now, this is not an entire set of them. I almost have them all, but there are a few more colors that I'm missing. And there's actually a bit of a mistake that I made in the video where I unboxed this mask. I do have another MK down here that's not with the rest of the lineup, and I'm sure you guys can see the color difference. Now, when I unboxed this one, I talked about how I thought it was a metallic red when I bought it but no, it was just a copper, I was wrong, whatever. This mask was already in the room, but I didn't put them side by side at the time that I was doing the video, so I was completely wrong. This is totally a red mask versus a copper. I think the color difference is pretty clear, and you can kind of see next to the other reds how it kind of does have a red hue, but not all these masks were as vibrant as others, and that can be seen with several other versions. Down here, we have the regular standard EU stamp set. Down here we have the copper MK, we have a raised stamp, another raised stamp, and an ultra white mold metallic. So these are kind of just some random ones thrown down here. But yeah, some of these masks are tagged, some aren't. That one is, that one is. The green and the red regular EU are. I don't think any of the MKs are. And then as far as the TD stamp, just the purple. Then down here, we have the 25th anniversary collector set. It's kind of an okay set. I wish it did have that chrome knife, but it still is like pretty decent presentation wise. Over here, we have the inflatable pumpkin ghost face. We have the luminary light set, various versions of home releases of Scream. I do have more of these that I do watch, but these are just the ones that are in here in the collection. We've got, I think Scream 3, the album, a Scream 2 sealed copy, uh, Scream the Collection, which is an older, rarer set. Scream 2 Steelbook. Scream 2022 release. A Scream, I think that's the 25th anniversary Best Buy release. Um, Scream 1, 2, and 3, just the trilogy. A Stab, a replica box set that has just a copy of Scream inside of it. Various versions of Scream here with like cover artworks. I don't have all of the original like blue face covers. I need to get those for sure. And then Scream 1 and Scream 3 demo uh screener copies i think yeah screener copies carrying across we have a ghost face plush blanket and i think there's another one behind it some of this stuff does have items behind it but i'm not going to pull everything out 
we have the Jimmy air blown inflatable. You guys have already seen this one unboxed and inflated on the channel. We have the six foot ghoul, a true classic. One of my favorites and one of the rarest ones for sure. Except for the meet and greet towering treater, which as far as I know, this is the only ghost face one to ever surface. I also have unboxed this thing and put it together if you guys are curious to check it out. There's a little open safety light there, as well as a neon sign hiding. And coming up, looks like we have a ghost face plush here, a lanyard, some t-shirts, several t-shirts in the back there, a hidden horror candle. I think this was the one, I think this may be the one that was used in the Horror Hound magazine. This may also just be my better quality version. I'm not sure. We'll see when we get to the other side of the room. Then we have, of course, the Cinemark plushes, cups, a nice Scream 3 album piece here. A whole stack of magazines here, but of course on top we have the Horror Hound magazine that I keep referencing that has the article by Nate Reagan that includes several different collection pieces that have now made their way here to my collection. Here's a bit of a funny unofficial one. This is completely bootleg, but it's a ghost face toothbrush cover. How about that? Had to have it just out of how weird it was. Of course, the popcorn buckets, one open, one sealed. Sealed original party plates, the table cover, the cups, and then we have some Scream 6 lenticular cups here with the figures inside. I don't have those on display since they're not open, but they're totally in there. Moving up to more Ghostface party wear, we have the three-dimensional Ghostface mug that recently came out. I'm not sure if these are official or not, probably not, but we have Ghostface Halloween cupcake covers. That is so cool. I love it. Up here, we have some very, very rare Scream Comes Home cups. You can only get those if you were at the event. Unfortunately, I did never make it, but I do have one of each of the color cups, so that's still pretty cool. We have the Ghostface Goblet, which of course is another classic. The Tiki Mug, still sealed. Pretty damn cool. The Fanta Theater Cup, which is really awesome to pair with the Fanta Bucket. And of course, they did have the promotional Fanta cans, which are possibly the coolest piece in the entire set. I mean, look at it all together, though. So sweet. So striking. Imagine it with purple. Ah, uh, yes. Who can forget Ghost Face Pin? You can't forget the Screaming Pin. You can't, you can't forget it. And of course, Ghostface Pencil, a true classic. Pretty sure this is unofficial as well, but it looks pretty good. Like the picture of the mask looks really, really well done. If you're a fan of drinking, we have the classic Scream 2 shot glass, as well as the Ghostface bottle opener, and another modern day Ghostface shot glass. Then we have Scream 1 and 2 promotional mugs, which are pretty darn rare pieces. In the back here, we have the Scream 5 popcorn bucket and cup, as well as one of my favorites, the Ghostface Coffin Cooler, which is also making a return in a slightly different form this year. I'm so, so excited to check that out. And hiding in the back, of course, we gotta have the official Scream cereal, the Strawberries and Scream Cereal Killer Screaming Box Ghostface Cereal. Above those, we have a bootleg Scream 4 box set, and a Ghostface Scary Peeper. I still need to get an updated one of those because this one had one eye or like one of the lights was missing out of the eye or it had fallen down. And I don't want to open it, but still a really, really cool piece. Then a very, very sought after one, the complete Scream Collection with the classic EU mask inside. Such a cool box. Obey the rules or die. Gonna be kind of hard to show them, but behind that we do have several different iterations of the original Ghostface machetes hanging here. So we've got several different versions of the horror knife from Scream 1, Scream 2. There's gray plastic versions, uh, the glow-in-the-dark versions. There are the chrome versions. There's like original ones. Oh, there's so many different versions of the machete at this point. It's crazy. Over here we have a beautiful Cotton Shroud Gen 2 that more than likely will not be sticking around. I've had this one for a little while, but it's more than likely going to get traded for some different blanks that I can turn into stuff for the museum. 
So while it's a beauty, I do already have one, and the person that's going to get it is going to love it. Next to that, we have one of these weird, unwearable, child size, like weird stitch shroud masks that was on the set of Still Screaming. I don't think these were used, but they were on set, and this one was given to me by Anthony Massey. Next to that, we have a very, very yellowed EU tea stamp mask. But this is not an Easter Unlimited tea stamp mask, like how we normally abbreviate that EU. This one actually just has E-U-T on the bottom of the chin. Very interesting. It's a pretty rare type, and it actually does have hand-cut eyes, which is something you don't see very often for E-U stamp masks, or E-U-T stamp masks even. But a uh, very, very peculiar type, and I definitely want to get this one cleaned up, I think. Speaking of E-U's, next up we have the E-U stamp droop hood or deluxe hood mask. It's basically a mask and cape, but without the cape. This is the EU stamp version, which could also use a little bit of cleaning, as you can see, but still really nice. Now, this piece is a very, very special Gen 2. This is a Gen 2 all-in-one, and basically it's a polyester shroud Gen 2 mask that is painted white with an opaque white paint, so it does not glow, and it has a, like, polyester, I guess, sleeve, you could call it, that goes along your body, that has holes cut in it, where you can put your arms through it and it's cut up the back pretty odd piece but i guess the point was to wear it with like a long sleeve with some black gloves and basically you've got your whole ghost face or scream killer costume but the white paint on these style masks is what's responsible for that whole rumor about the original scream one hero masks being painted white there was one of these masks that was on set that was sold as a hero mask and thought to be a modified hero mask but it was not it was just one of these original Fun World masks. So they're incredibly rare, very, very hard to come across, but still a very, very cool and interesting piece. Next to that is another absolutely gorgeous Gen 2, but this one is the full instant disguise. So this actually does have a cape. It has the full droop hood, as you can see. And uh, yeah, they weren't called a mask and cape at this point in time. It was called an instant disguise. Pretty damn cool. Behind those, we have the large scale Roto plush ghost face, which is kind of covered up by most of these masks, but there was really nowhere else to put him because he's so massive. And next to that, almost as big, I think technically they're about the same size. I think they're both 18 inches. We have the RIP series ghost face scream doll. Moving down from there, we have some very cool rarities. Which end do I even start with? I guess we'll start with this one. So this is an EU tea stamp mask with a very rare, very peculiar style shroud. This was the only style ghost face mask produced with this style shroud. Well, except for this one. So for whatever reason, they kind of did the same style shroud. It's slightly, slightly different, but it's almost the exact same thing. But they did it with a printed burlap texture with a scarecrow mask. I'm guessing maybe they did this for people that couldn't handle the burlap being on their head. And it actually is a really, really cool looking mask. I like the look of this mask. And I like the look of this mask. They're both incredibly rare though, so it's really hard to come across these types, but definitely some of my favorites here in the collection. Then, as far as this zombie, which I'll be honest guys, I don't have too many of the zombies. I need to get a mummy still. I'm missing a few styles that I used to have more of. But, this zombie in particular is the Hard Mold 2010 Zombie. So most of the zombie masks and most masks in general that are made by Fun World are very soft, pliable vinyl, or they're a hard plastic. These are a vinyl, but they're very, very, very rigid and stiff. The chins in particular are very hard. This is the original tag for the mask. If you have any curiosities about it, it's an April to June 2010 run, hard mold zombie. So there you go. Next to that, we have a child size scarecrow with the burlap shroud. You can definitely see side by side the size difference in these scarecrow mold masks. So yeah, I am missing one style still. Moving down here though, we've got some stuff hiding back here. We've got a couple scream plush throws. We've got this one weird version of the ghost face mask with like the nose paint that's not connecting. They never should have been released like this, but they were. It is an official mask. We have a ghost face messenger bag from Scream 4 era that is still tagged. And of course, we have the ghost face 10 light sets you guys saw one earlier with randy's death costume that's the one with the hang tag these are the boxed versions 
Check them out. Which one do you guys prefer? The one with the advertisement on it and a partial window or the full window showing the full product? Sliding on down, we have the Ghostface Creature Cap, still tagged. This one is pretty cool, I, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely the kind of person to wear this thing around, but you have a polyester see-through face mask, basically is what it is, it's a mask, but uh, you've got the ghost face mask printed on there. And yeah, it's, it's kind of like a visor. It comes down from inside the cap. So I guess you would just have this sweaty fabric shoved up inside of the mask until you're ready to pull it down. And now you've got a mask as well. It's a pretty cool concept, but I won't lie. All it makes me think about is Shriek if you know what I did last Friday the 13th. You know, in the high school when he's wearing the hat, that's what it kind of looks like to me, but still a really, really cool product. I like how you guys just wanted a tour, but instead you're getting all sorts of like mini random reviews of masks that I like and you're hearing all these weird little facts that you probably don't care about, but maybe you do. Here we have the original run <laughs> EL Ghostface. Uh, not a huge fan of those. We have the Fade In and Out Red Mouth and Green Mouth variant. Of course, still tagged for all these because I'm not, I'm not going to wear them. And speaking of Shrieky, if you know what I did last Friday the 13th, here are a couple of replica masks that I sculpted. Um, here's the regular killer one. Here's like the, you know, cover artwork version. Here's a scary movie, The Killer Mask. Now this mask is a very good replica, but it does not have any lineage to like screen use molds or anything like that. I have had people ask me about that, but no, it's just a really nice replica. Now this mask actually does have some lineage to original molds. This was cast off of an original surviving ghost maker. So probably as close as I'll ever get to owning an original one. Down here, we just have a few extra, you know, poly shroud and cotton shroud versions. This is actually an all-in-one version. As a tribute to Wes, of course, we have to have some Freddy stuff in here. So we have a nice part three glove, a little ghost haunting down here, the original Papa 3 mask. This does not have glass in front of it, so it's very easy to access if I need to grab it, um, just in case of emergencies. But it's also still well protected with the plastic. I've explained that before. But anyways, this is about ghost face, not ghost face. This piece is a very cool, very important find. The Jimmy animatronic ghost face. And it still works. Unfortunately, it's got a little bit of stains on it and stuff like that. I've never really tried to clean it or do anything with it. I'll probably just leave it as is, but very, very cool piece. Above Papa, we have my only other silicone mask, which is this beautiful silicone Freddy Krueger mask with glove, the sweaters in there. Of course, I've got a glove down here and I'm supposed to have another one on the way. And he is also bagged just in case any dust were to get on him. Above that, we've got various ghost relics in here, just all sorts of different stuff. And how about this, a fun world Freddy Krueger mask. I think it even is stamped Fun World Dev on the chin. Let's check. Yep, Fun World Dev. Up here we have a Dead by Daylight resin cast ghost face mask. I painted and finished this one. I have not shrouded it yet. I still need to do that, but yeah, it's a very, very great representation of how the mask looks in the game because it is very different from any of the actual ghost face masks, as you can tell pretty darn different from an EU. But still, it's a pretty cool looking mask, so no big deal. Then we have another EU stamped mask and cape, but this one was gifted to me with a hole in the mouth. I've actually worn this one at the theater a couple of times because I can sip my Icy, which is my snack of choice when I'm seeing a movie. Usually it's just an Icy. Maybe, maybe some Reese's Pieces, but usually just an Icy. So yeah, that's almost always my go-to theater mask. Getting back over here, we have various other goodies hiding. There's a devil face costume back there. You can't really see it, but it's a Dead by Daylight devil face costume. A sealed collector's edition costume, also pretty darn rare. You guys saw this recently, the mask and knife set with a collector's edition mask. And as far as masks above it, we have one of the new tagged chrome masks, the child size chrome, a Scream 4 tagged ultra white. I think that's actually the one that Nate Reagan was given as a promotional piece. So if that is the one, which I do believe it is, looking around, then that's kind of a promotional ultra white, so that's kind of pretty cool. We have a pumpkin mask back there. The hanging light-up figure here in the corner, just because it's the only place I could fit it. Scorched face tagged, devil face, the new Dead by Daylight version, as well as an original Polyshroud version, check that out. And another Dead by Daylight version, 
however the Walmart smaller tag $8 version. And we'll take a brief look at this patriotic mask before moving down here and giving my man Herbie some respect. This is the Herbie Theater, an original vintage cast, Distortions Unlimited, Zombie Beheaded, Beheaded Illusion prop, and of course it has original Herbie hair on it. Check that out. This one was painted and finished by me, so this is not an original from Distortions Unlimited, but this is an original cast. This was one of the old ones they had lying around whenever I visited. Yet again though, you guys don't care about that, you're here for Ghostface, but throw some respect on my man Herbie. Chillin' and Killin' with Herbie is one of my favorite life sizes, the Scary Movie Mask and Robe. Now this robe is a replica that was made off of one of the original screen used, but the mask is also a replica made off of one of the screen used. So this is a real screen used mold cast, or technically I guess it's a recast, that was made off of Dave Sheridan, aka Doofy and The Killer's original mask. I painted and finished this one myself, but I just absolutely love it. Obviously, a lot of people know Scary Movie. Probably even more people know the What's Up mask and Scary Movie more than they do Ghostface and all this stuff. Another great life size though is this Scream 2 or Scream the Sequel as it was called when it was in production cast and crew wardrobe set. So as far as I know I've got pretty much everything you could have except for the lighter. There was an engraved Zippo lighter and I have seen a few of those pop up but I've passed on them because they were quite pricey. Most of this stuff I actually got incredibly cheap and they were all sourced from different cast and crew members. And one of my favorite pieces, and the only one I've ever seen of this, the Scream the Sequel Fanny Pack is originally tagged still with the Jansport tag. How cool is that? The embroidery and printing on all this stuff is also top notch. Very, very high quality, of course, for cast and crew. In the bottom of this display, we have a couple of bib zombie masks that I don't really have anywhere else to display. And uh, they're both infected with blue dots, so they're kind of just chilling down here. We have, of course, the ghost face lava lamp. You gotta have the lava lamp. And a fade in and out mask. On the floor, because I have nowhere else to put them, we have a classic bleeding mask. This nice little random fun world costume mask. I believe it's a friendly faces. And a fiber optic mask, which unfortunately does not work. Still all cool masks, but really nowhere to display them. And these style masks are kind of very difficult to display in general. But if we pan up, something that is easy to display and looks beautiful are all of these costumes. Check it out, guys. So many different iterations of the Screen Stalker variants. And of course, we've got some rare ones like the Glowing Blood costume, the Glowing Blood mask, and the giant size Scream Stalker. I'll go through these a little bit slower. I'm not going to flip them over so that you can see what masks are on them but they do have various different masks. Some are RDS, some are HN. I don't think I have an MK one as far as like the MK squinty eyes, but there are also Gen 2 versions. I don't have a Gen 1 version. Of course, this is the first variant of the bleeding mask or bleeding costume. Check that out. This was like groundbreaking technology at the time, guys. This was really a big deal. The giant size Scream Stalker costume is just such a crazy, weird, zany costume, but I absolutely love it. All of these different variants as well that are non just normal Scream Stalkers, I absolutely love them. This one kind of is, it's just a different package, but I mean, all this different stuff is just so cool. I love it. And of course, if you want to be stylish and if you want to present, you have to show up in the ghost face tie. Let's cover all this stuff up here, why don't we? So in the back, as far as masks, we have one of the new glow-in-the-dark ultra-white mold masks, a couple of first-run 25th anniversary masks that are in absolutely gorgeous shape, the elusive ghost face bowling ball. You gotta have it. Gotta have it. The ghost face tabletop decoration, which is still, in my opinion, one of the most underrated merchandise items of all time. And this one still happens to be tagged. You probably can't see it, but it is. It's not a very impressive tag. It's basically... The ass scene and scream block just tagged on it. That's pretty much all it is. We have the Dead by Daylight Viper face, the Skelly face, of course, the original Skelly face. I miss him. I miss him dearly. The pumpkin, the Ukrainian mask, or the Stop the War mask, the Pride mask, and the Patriotic mask. This is not a different one. There is a newer version of the Patriotic mask that is a slightly different color, 
Both of the ones I have are the same, like, older original version, so I still need to get that newer variant. As for pieces up here, we have some really, really cool pieces. Let's start on this side. So here we have some mini horror vinyl figures from Funko. We have Billy, Chucky, and of course, Ghostface. I actually had this for like years and years. I've never had the individual Ghostface, so if anyone happens to have an extra one of those, I'm still looking. But yeah. Then we have the Creepy Stone Bust, which is a really, really cool hollow vacuum form piece that lights up and screams when you press the button. Behind the stone bus, there is a McFarlane Movie Maniacs figure, um, one that's out of the package. You probably can't see it too, too well. I'm filming over my head, so I'm not sure what you guys can see right now. But there's a horror series Ghostface Funko reaction figure, as well as some more Funko Ghostface. Here we have, of course, the very sought after Funko Pop Ghostfaces, and we have both versions. Both of these are legitimate. We have the one where it's Ghost Space Face, and the one where it's one word, the one where it's one word is signed by Matthew Lillard. There's a photo of him signing it and everything. Really, really cool. Both of these were gifts, actually, which is absolutely incredible, because otherwise I probably would not have paid the price for one of these. Then we have a Funko Mopies ghost face on top there. There's a little ghost face racer, and behind the Mopies, I don't know how well you guys can see it or if you can see it at all, because it's covered up, but there's an entire sealed box of Ghostface Racers. However, some of the coolest stuff is on this side. There's this weird Scream 4 unofficial box set that comes with a film cell, an action figure, a copy of the movie, and some other stuff. But this version of the action figure is the full vinyl body. I do have another version here that is a singular package version that actually is the fabric lower half, and of course the vinyl upper half. So both versions of it, no zombie version, but I still need this one in the singular package. Then we have the Scream 1 and 2 water balls. These are really, really cool. And yes, guys, they are called water balls. I know that gore globes or, you know, something like that would have worked a little bit better. But still, these are really, really cool classic pieces. Unfortunately, they are missing water, but that's very common. Then this damaged looking piece back here is actually a prototype Ghostface plastic bust. Now, I do believe that this size may have been used for like the pathway markers, or they may have been the larger, or sorry, they may have been the smaller size, like the creepy stone bust, because these are the same exact sculpture. The only difference, of course, is the size and the fact that this one has a texture added onto it. I don't have a ton of information on this piece other than the fact that it was a prototype that was gifted from Fun World to Nate Reagan, and Nate then gifted it to me. Down here we have some other really awesome collectibles. I'm not quite sure if they're as cool as what's up top, but still some really cool stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look. We've got an opened window winker, a 25th anniversary voice changer, still sealed, the Scream 4 classic mask, um, cloth, lower half, ghost face figure we just took a look at, and we have some other cool figures. We have on the left here, the original Sideshow true official ghost face figure. And on this side, we have a custom by Roadkill Customs, and check that out. Absolutely awesome, like KNB custom, what Ghostface could have looked like figure. Really, really cool together. Then we have some cool pins, some official, some not, some rare patches. Of course, the actual voice changer that was used in Scream 5, as well as some of the original ones. And here's the other package for the voice changer. So this is an original and this is an original sealed one, but they also came packaged like this. And this package in particular was also featured in that Horror Hound magazine. And of course, we do have Roman's phone. How cool is that? This is not the screen used one, but it's the same style. There's a few different variations of the ghost face door cover. It's pretty much the same exact image. Slightly, slightly different but pretty much exactly the same. We have some Drew Barrymore Scream official socks, the window shadow, which is really damn cool. In this corner though, we have one of my favorite pieces. I've never seen another one of these, and I think this may actually be one of the earliest, if not one of the first for sure, merchandise pieces from Fun World to feature the Weeping Ghost. I'm pretty certain 
that that is supposed to be the weeping ghost. It's not exactly the same, but they never made a mask that looked quite like that. And this would have been pre-scream, so maybe a little bit of artistic liberties taken. But look at some of these other masks. That's very similar to a skull they produced. That's very similar to another Fantastic Faces. This one, not so much. But uh, yeah, very, very cool early Fun World merchandise. And there's another different one back here that has a witch, a jack-o'-lantern, a ghost, and uh, what's that, a bat there? Pretty damn cool. I just have those together because uh, even though it's not Screaming Ghostface related, it's always a Fun World in here. Then we've got the Glow in the Dark Blacklight Reactive Candle. The classic Bleeding Brains. The Hidden Horror Candle. And looking at this one, this one is a bit more tattered and torn. This is the one that was featured in the Horror Hound magazine for sure. There's the Bloody Brains Candle, which is a three wick, five head candle. Pretty insane, but still pretty damn cool. We've got a uh, Ghostface Air Freshener hiding in between there. Next to the sealed electronic wall and door plaque. I absolutely love this one. I love the packaging on it. Really damn cool. And I do have an unsealed chrome Ghostface knife, one of the most recent ones. But my favorite piece out of anything we've taken a look at here, I haven't even addressed yet. That's right, it's the Scream 2 Beach Ball. It's such a weird promotional piece. I know it seems ridiculous, but that's why I love it so much. It's just such a weird promotional piece. And pretty rare too. I've only seen one other of these and I believe it was sealed. Maybe I'm misremembering on that one, but when I came across this one sealed, I couldn't pass on it. Moving down, we have pretty much what I believe is the entire collection of Royal Bobbles Ghostface figures, or bobbleheads, I guess you could say. There is the one that doesn't fit in the lineup because it's not the same size, and also, I mean, look at how well these fit. That just looks great. But yeah, there's this one down here as well. Um, I think I have an extra back there of one of them. And of course, the original bobblehead, the head knockers. Still one of my favorites. I love this one. But Royal Bobbles really did do a great job on this entire lineup. Then we get to the Horror Headliners XL Ghostface. It's pretty much a statue, but still really, really cool. I think this is one of the like lower numbers as well. So one of the first ones made, but still really awesome. We have Kevin Williamson's screenplay of the first Scream. I think those are actually kind of rare, but it's just a really cool piece to have. The Living Dead Ghostface, of course. If you love the Living Dead dolls, and if you love Ghostface, you gotta have this one. At the bottom of this bookshelf, we have the Ghostface Party Projector. This Emerald City Comic-Con Glow-in-the-Dark exclusive Ghostface Blow-Ups, which I think those were sold after the con, but still pretty rare, pretty cool. Then we have a bunch of Handmade by Robots figures. Now, I actually am missing quite a few of these. I have not been keeping up with them as of recent, and there's been a lot of products I haven't bought as of recent because I've been saving for the move, and I don't know. Every now and again, something crazy pops up that I have to grab. But uh, yeah, I've been needing to catch up on the rest of these, but I absolutely love all these, especially together. They look really nice. And look at this one. It's got that upside down and backwards hype sticker. You gotta love it. We do have a door cover open here, keeping it classy on the back of this door. This has been here for a very, very long time, and I don't think it'll come down anytime soon. I don't know if this will come to the museum or if this will stay here, but... Here we have some beheaded illusions. These are Distortions Unlimited pieces. These are some really, really cool puppets. Um, this one is not a puppet, but still a really rare severed head. I love all of these pieces dearly. Distortions is still, in my opinion, the absolute greatest mask company in the world. They have created some of the coolest pieces. I mean, just look at these. And these are the vintage ones. As they updated them throughout the years, they got even cooler. But yet again, that's not Screaming Ghostface related. You guys don't care. Well, I'm just trying to fucking give you a little culture. Be mad at me if you want. But anyways, back to Screaming Ghostface. We have some retro cloth figures here. We have the original Scream 4 era one, and then we have the more modern day version. We have the ultimate Ghostface NECA figure, the Toonie Terrors figure, and unfortunately, the dreaded Miko figure. Then we have a dreaded Collector's Edition costume, but this is the one that didn't come sealed. Oh no! 
Yeah, this is a this is a danger. I worry about this, but I think it's not in contact with anything, and it's not close enough to any of this stuff that it should affect it. Or at least I haven't noticed anything being affected. If it does, I'll probably be very sad, and I'll let you guys know. Encased in this cardboard down here, we actually do have a very rare Scream standee. Um, it's Scream as well as many other things, but I have not put this together. I do think I've opened it and shown you guys the contents in another video. But I don't know if I'll put this together for the museum or if I'll just leave it sealed because it is some old, like, thin cardboard, but still really cool to own it. Here's a nice new 25th anniversary costume, a registered Ghostface costume, and an original What's Up Ghostface costume. I love these. Over here, we have some Ghost Maker replicas. These were done by November Novelties. If you guys don't know the stories on this, you can uh, check that out in another video. It would be quite, quite a long period of time to go over this, but yeah. We've got a couple of knives hanging out down here. We've got some bleeding ones, some light up ones, stuff like that. I need to hang those back up, put them somewhere, but not a lot of room. Here's a sealed McFarlane Movie Maniacs ghost face. This is a different version than the other one. The other one is Scream. This one is ghost face. So the backer for like the stand for him is entirely different. Outside of that, I think the figures are exactly the same. And then it's time for more masks. Here's another shelf of absolutely beautiful pieces. So let's go ahead and start going over them. Here we have a replica KNB mask from Burke Bench Designs. So this is a replica. I think everything else on this shelf, yes, is all official fun world. Here we have two ASIS, one pink, one purple tag mask. This one with the small eye and nose paint. This one with the larger eye and nose paint. Very cool to see both of them side by side. You should be able to see the differences in the mouth as well as the nose and eyes. But yeah, you can check that out for a second. Then we have the plastic hard mold costume mask. This was used in Scream 6 and Scream 5. So very cool to have one of these. This is the boxed silver ghost face mask. It is, I guess, important to note that this is silver and not chrome. So the new masks are the chrome masks, these are the silver masks, but this is the original version of the metallic, at least, you know, the, the metallic metallic. We've got a nice 25th anniversary first run mask, a second run collector's edition mask, so no blue dots on this bad boy. An original 1995 Buck 120, mint condition, same style as used in Scream 1. Here's a 2017 EU, kind of out of place, but none of this is in any particular lineup. It's just masks on a shelf. These are some nice ones. This is a 2010 Scream 4 era tagged EU, non-glow. This is a black and red tagged EU, but this is the Scream 3 era, and so is this one. And over here we have a TD stamp glow in the dark reshoot mask. This is the proper era and time period. Then we have an EUHN, a nice Buck 119 here. These were used in a TV series, so not film knives, but still TV series knives. We have a nice Poly Shroud RDS there, and then a few different EUs. This is an older one. Both of these are factory sample masks, so these were never tagged. 2016, 2017, I believe. Now above all of these beautiful masks, there are a few more hanging above them. Nothing too crazy though. We have like a 2015 spoof mask, one from last year, a silent screamer, an ultra white, and then a couple of plastic masks. But then we get into this display case. And this, as you can see by the holy glowing light, is absolutely the best collection of masks in the room. Starting off, we have one of these from Spirit Halloween and a 100% cotton sign, which is made off of screen used files. And we'll start all the way down here with, of course, the White Shroud Gen 1, the mask that kind of started it all for the whole weeping ghost scream thing. Then we've got a really, really nice multi-dot here. Absolutely gorgeous copy. Love the shape on this one. Beautiful, beautiful condition. A nice Poly Shroud second dimple Gen 1 mask. Then we have a another just beautiful, beautiful condition Gen 2 Cotton Shroud, almost perfectly brand new. A nice RDS with some extremely, very, very long tassels. Like you almost never see them that long. 
And then back here we've got some HNs, a couple different variations of them, and a nice Gen 2 droop hood mask. Very, very nice one. Most of the masks in here, shy of the HN masks, are almost like brand new, perfect, great condition masks. So really a nice selection. Now as far as the knife you're seeing here, you probably already know what this is, but if you have not seen this in one of my videos beforehand, this is a screen used scary movie, The Killer Knife. This is a rubber knife, but this is what the hero knives look like. Very, very cool. This is actually not owned by me anymore. This is one of the pieces that I gave up to get the Randy Death costume. But a 100% worth it trade. You know, it's really cool, but especially with the home that it's going to, I think it was absolutely worthwhile. We have a Scream 3 trailer back there. And another Scream 3 piece. This is like a weird passport photo of Sydney. There apparently were many different versions of this that have her with different hairstyles. But yeah, there you go. Moving right along to this side, we also have a Hello My Name Is Doofy sticker. This is actually a production made sticker. So it was unused, of course, because it hasn't been stuck to anything. But still, it was made for the production and was on set for Scary Movie. We have a CD scene, which is a very rare, very cool, like, cut CD. There's a stand for it as well, which the, like, promotional version or advanced cassette of the Scream 2 soundtrack is leaning against. And then we have the prop pass there. Let me go ahead and slide this glass open. Hope you guys like that sound. That's pretty satisfying to me. But if you look on the back of the props pass, it does have a bloody thumbprint, as you can see, near my thumb. This is Skip Crank's prop pass from Skip... I said from Skip 3 almost. From Scream 3. This is a one-of-a-kind piece. Really, really cool production on set piece. Moving down, we have another HN and another HN, just different variations. This mask is a still screaming screen used mask. So this is one of the masks that would have been behind the actors and actresses while they were being interviewed for still screaming. Very cool. These also came directly from Anthony Massey. Next to that, we have a Scream 4 zombie mask. This was a piece that was painted to look like a production mask from Scream 4. There were zombies on set, and they were hand-painted by Frank McGovern, the man who designed them. However, this is not one of those. This was not from a set. This is a piece that Frank painted for me as a gift. And next to that, another one of my favorites, a Wes Craven signed Scream 3 era mask absolutely gorgeous one of my favorite pieces of course wes is super super important to the franchise and uh you know getting anything like this from him or by him signed by him is very difficult and uh super important that's why it's kind of placed where it is it's almost like the centerpiece in this entire display case now the mask now the mask next to it is a scream 4 production mask that was altered and modified but not used at least as far as I know, it was never screen used. It was just modified, but that came directly from Nate Reagan. And it's also one of the nicest masks in the entire collection. And next to that one, this is kind of a bittersweet one, guys. This is a mask I dreamed of for years and years. A tagged pink Fantastic Faces Gen 1. One had never surfaced until this one eventually did. And I paid $5 for it. So literally a dream mask. The pink Fantastic Faces is my favorite color of those. It's just such a great looking mask. And I was able to find one for such a steal. It was meant to be. I never wanted to part with this mask. Unfortunately, when the opportunity arose to get Randy's death costume, this was one of the items I had to let go of. It was either that or sell a large majority of the collection. And I would much rather part with one piece over a ton of pieces, even if it is incredibly rare. If the piece of cardboard is the only real difference, I would rather have something like that than a tagged Gen 1 any day. One day, I will have another untagged one, but for now, this one is still chilling here. But as for the rest of these beautiful tagged masks, let's go ahead and take a look. This is an original Reptile Weapons Stab Theater knife, not screen used, but this is one of the original make and models. I do have the original packaging and everything else for it as well. But this one is on display in here, next to a very beautiful tagged Gen 1 small dot. 
next to that is an alternate tagged Fantastic Faces Gen 1 second dimple. You can see the differences in the tag there. Obviously very different finishes on the mask, very different shapes. And then next to that, we have two tagged Fearsome Faces. Now both of these are technically the same mold, but slightly different time periods when they were produced. You can tell the difference in how shallow they are, the finishes in the nose and the eyes, some stuff like that. I've pointed that out in a recent video, but still there for you if you haven't seen it. Then we have two more tagged Gen 2s. We have a black ASIS tagged and a normal ASIS tagged. All of these are beauties and all very unique shapes as well. Then we come on down and we start with the fluorescence. Well, I guess we kind of started at the end of this one with the pink Gen 1. But we have the green Gen 1, orange Gen 1, pink Gen 2, green Gen 2, and orange Gen 2, all cotton shrouds. Important to note because these three are poly shrouds. So you've got a nice poly shroud Gen 2 green, poly shroud Gen 2 pink, and Poly Shroud Gen 2 Orange. Even though these are all incredibly rare, oddly enough, the rarest of them are kind of the later ones, the Poly Shroud Gen 2s. So keep an eye out for those. Then we have another tag fearsome, this time a nice, beautiful Cotton Shroud RDS. One of my favorites. Unfortunately, the tag does have some damage, but nothing too major. And then we have another tagged Fantastic Faces, but this one is a splotch mold. Next to that, this has to be one of the most important pieces in the collection. One of the nicest gifts anyone has ever given me for sure. Just incredibly cool. This is Wes Craven's production made, set used, but not screen used. They never appeared on screen. Scarecrow ghost face mask. Very, very cool piece. As you may can tell, it is a much lighter, much cleaner burlap than the one that we looked at earlier. It does have a tag on the inside from production. I don't know how well you can see that from the glaring light below, but it's on the inside of the shroud, like right there. And uh, that's, uh, it still blows my mind to think that that thing's right there. It's insane. Here's the piece of paper from inside of Jamie's pants. There's a Scream 4 production sticker. And then two of the rarest and best ghost face masks ever made, the Halloween Horror Nights also known as HHN ghost face masks. There's the non-glow actor version that was never sold to the public or was never supposed to be sold to the public. And then the glow in the dark version, which was sold in stores. Both of them very sought after, both of them very, very great ghost face masks. And we find ourselves sinking to the very, very bottom. I guess let's start on this side. We have the ultra white, orange, pink, and green. Of course, have to have those to complete the set. The orange and green MK Squinty. They never made a pink one. And the orange and green EU Standard. One of those being tagged. Now, these are technically fantastic faces, but it's not like the same as like this type of stuff. It is still technically the fantastic faces line, but these are EU, MK, and regular like EU masks. So I know that can get a bit confusing, but I feel like it's still important to try and tell you guys the difference. And lastly, for the fluorescent masks, the EUHN Green. As far as we know, they only made these in green. I've heard some people claim other colors, but I've never seen any actual photos or proof of it. So as far as we know, they only made the green. Another piece that we have sitting down here is this Scream 4 production mask. This is not mine, but this is one of the original Scream 4 production style masks that was made. So it has like the higher quality collector's edition style shroud on it. Probably very hard to see because this backlight is so harsh. But yeah, there's paperwork with it. Then we have the Scream 3 light box Mylar here that was sent in. And we have a few various tags. Some of these more important than others. Like this zombie one here that you guys can probably barely see. This actually came off of a Scream 4 production zombie style mask. So in the same way that they did have Scarecrows. And this one also, the Scarecrow is tagged. But in the same way that they had those tagged, they had zombies tagged as well. And that came off of Nate Reagan's production zombie mask. So while the mask isn't there, it's still a really cool piece. Next to that, we have a mask signed by Henry Winkler, standard EU. We have an EU mask that was repainted that is signed on the inside by several, several different ghost faces. We have a mask that was used on set 
for the Jay and Silent Bob reboot, was signed by Jay and Silent Bob, and was signed by David Arquette. And then, almost lastly, I guess we'll, we'll save that one for last, technically. So we have a very rare orange horror knife back there. They did technically make a purple one, and I've heard claims of other colors, but I've only ever seen a purple one. So very, very rare, but very cool. If you ever come across the fluorescent knives, grab them. They're not like big money, high ticket items or anything like that, guys, but they are still really cool. And lastly, one that has kind of become a disappointment because of how it's ended up. We have this Cotton Shroud RDS mask that is signed by Lori Metcalf, also known as Debbie Salt, also known as Miss Loomis, Billy's mother. It's signed on the forehead. I got a little knife happy, Miss Loomis, but unfortunately the marker kind of faded out. It looks like orange and faded and weird, but her signature on the mouth still looks great. And I thought about having this one signed by Jamie as well, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I get this one signed by Jamie so I have Miss Loomis and Randy both on a Randy death scene mask? Or should I get that nice one over there on the display signed by Jamie instead? But there you have it, guys. That's my ghost face shrine as it sits modern day. It has been an absolutely incredible journey to collect all this stuff, and I greatly appreciate all the help along the way. I really can't wait to share all of this with all of you out there. I don't know how many of you will come visit the collection because it will be based in southern Mississippi, but if you guys are interested in Screaming Ghostface stuff, I definitely think that this is something you're going to absolutely love. And of course, I don't just love Screaming Ghostface. As a fan of Scream, one of the reasons why I appreciate it is the love and appreciation that they have for all horror, and I love those things too. So once I'm given the space to expand, it won't just be Screaming Ghostface, guys. There will still be plenty of Screaming Ghostface, don't worry. But I think there's so much more that we can expand upon, and I really can't wait to do that with all of you. Well, there you have it. There's my Ghostface Shrine. What do you guys think? Am I a really dedicated Scream fan? Or some overly obsessed lunatic? Let me know in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, let me know what was your favorite piece in the collection. If you could choose one, maybe five pieces, let me know. Maybe at some point I'll do a video on my five favorite pieces. But if I had to choose one, just one, it wouldn't be the badass ghost face here. It would still have to be the Randy Death costume. That's a one of a kind piece. It's the death costume and my favorite character. One of the most sentimental moments for the entire franchise for most of us fans. So I got to go with the Randy Death costume, but I'm curious to know if you had to pick one, what would it be? I feel like this video has kind of been all over the place and this has also been pretty strenuous to go through and kind of talk about every single thing or point out each and everything. And I'm sure there's still some of it that I've missed that's hiding behind little things here and there. But I really just wanted to share with you all my current ghost face shrine, even though we've waited entirely too long but I wanted to go ahead and announce for sure in this video that we will be opening the museum. And I have already talked to the owners of the location where I want to put it, and it is absolutely my first choice of where I wanted it to be, and it looks like it's going to work out. I'm really excited for it, and I cannot wait to share it all with you. I don't have exact dates yet, but from the way they're talking, and the way that I would like to do things, it's looking like maybe later this year we'll be opening that museum to the public, and all of you to want to see these Screaming Ghostface pieces, as well as pieces from many other horror films. Because even though I am a Screaming Ghostface fan, the thing that really brings me into these movies is the appreciation that they have for other horror. It wasn't just about a scary guy in a robe and a white mask for me. There's a reason why I really, really resonated with Randy so much. Anyways, I'm getting off track. I just wanted to basically say, I love you all. I love horror movies and I can't wait to share my love of horror with all of you. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Hello, viewers. Make sure you like and subscribe, or I'll gut you like a fish.